G'day guys, Mac with the Earth Circle. I just wanted to do something a little different today, and I suppose it's a positive episode. I just built one of these. I just built a Sicaran Omega, and apparently it's a tank destroyer by the way, but I disagree with that definition. Um, it was really, really good to build. Normally, when it comes to Forge World vehicles, they have just a cluster fuck of parts. Uh, they needlessly overcomplicate sides and hulls and that kind of thing. And there is that, obviously, with the Sikorans. I don't like the four parts that make up the hull. They're a bit annoying because... Um, basically, you now have four different parts that have to mate flush against one side of the hull. And then you've got to get them all to mate flush against the other side of the hull. Which means a lot of filing and fitting to get a really good flush fit. Um, which I frankly have stopped bothering to do because it's it's hidden by the paintwork anyway. But um, yeah, so I built a Sikoran Omega. Why did I build a tank that's probably one of the worst tanks you can buy in the Heresy? Uh, I think it looks cool. <laughs> that's that's the long short of it. I think it's a really cool looking tank downside is yeah it has absolutely atrocious rules um oh well, they're not i'm being a bit harsh on it the rules are borderline absolutely atrocious when you compare them to everything else that's out there um this has basically got the firepower of a six-man plasma gun squad that's outside of rapid fire range that's about it uh yeah you can upgrade it to las cannon side sponsons for example um, but in doing so, you essentially make this thing the cost of a Leviathan, a Spartan. You can even get this tank up to the cost of a knight with just a few upgrades. It is insanely, insanely poorly uh, written and balanced and all that kind of good stuff. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the turret for the guns themselves, the whole plasma coil area and the sort of muzzle of the weapon is one part and then at the rear of the weapon where the sort of uh, magazines are I guess you could say I don't know why it has magazines but you know they're there uh, that's another part and on top of that is the magazines themselves the four little cylinders that stick out the top uh, two on each side they're separate parts the Cabling the six cables uh, in pairs, three pairs of cables, or two triplets of cables, depending how you look at it, whatever you like. They're all separate parts as well. The little visor in the center of the turret, above the sort of sights and scopes part, yep, that's a separate thing as well. And, of course, the sights in that at the front of the turret is separate. Now, this is interesting because every single part fitted together perfectly. And that's a rare thing. So that's why I wanted to bring attention to it. The There's sort of like a wedge dovetail going on with the actual main guns themselves and how they mount to the turret. There's these big sockets, which are inward-facing, almost like a pyramid where you cut the capstone off it. And the guns slot perfectly into that, which is pretty neat. And then, of course, there's these big slotted uh, tongue and groove type deals um, that mount the actual barrels of the guns to the receivers of the guns. And then everything else is like a ball joint. So you basically can't stuff it up. It's just put a drop of glue in the ball and put everything in. My only point of advice would be make sure you put on the cables before you slide the rear half of the gun on. I didn't follow the instructions because I don't read instructions and um, yeah I did have to pull the receivers off. Um, as soon as I put it on I went hang on a minute I'm not going to be able to get those parts in. But yeah there was no warping or distortion or any of that kind of thing and it's a really good fit. Another thing I want to point out though is the quality of the uh, cast from the Masters I can see the 3D printing marks <laughs> or the machining marks um, on the on the actual vehicle. So there's a series of serrated lines that actually run all over 
the turret's weaponry. And I dare say this was 3D printed and then cleaned right up, probably designed in CAD, drawn in CAD. Um, they've rapid prototyped it with a 3D printer, made their master out of that, sanded it back, put putty on it if they needed to, whatever they needed to, then they've made the mold from there. It was just an interesting little side note. Now, downsides. Um, this turret, the weapons will not pivot. So, they always will be facing this sort of just flat, maybe even slightly downwards tilting angle. Uh, they will never be pointing up at the sky or any of that kind of thing. They don't independently pivot. No, it's just fixed. They always look like that. Uh, they are also quite big. Uh, on the bright side, very unlikely to snap them because these are a good five inches long um, and almost an inch wide um, from top to bottom of the weapon and probably a quarter inch across. Uh, I'm using inches even though I'm Australian, so let's say about 20 mils wide, uh, or tall, sorry, about... 12 centimeters long and about eight millimeters wide so yeah very very big weapons for their amazing firepower they put out of all of six plasma gun marines at 24 inches range without rapid fire so yeah kind of pathetic firepower um kind of pathetic on points price for those who are wondering you can look it up for free on the forge world website what the rules are this is of course the horus heresy rules i'm talking about uh, it might be really good in 8th edition, but 8th edition itself is not very good, so... Oh, shots fired, shots fired. Anyway, I will talk about some proper hobby content. I've just been working from like 6 in the morning till 7 at night lately, so I just haven't had time to put out the content I like. And I do have a video I'm working on, which is pretty research intensive. And basically, I've taken a look at one of the Horus Heresy Black Books. Take your pick which one it is. Uh, from Forge World, and I've sort of gone through the whole development cycle of the book as near as I can tell, and sort of want to point out a few pros and cons and review the whole book in depth. And of course, that is taking its time. Uh, I will get back to the getting started in Horus Heresy soon. Um, just need a bit of a break from that to put up other stuff to try and keep the channel a little bit varied because I don't want to just saturate the one type of video. Anyway, that's all from me, and I will see you probably on the weekend. Catch you all later.